I love Dollis gear and how immediate it is, but I certainly don't love many of its limitations. And I especially don't love how much it costs. And because of that, I've created this, the Groove Dock. This is a custom designed system that I've built to kind of serve as a companion to Dollis gear. My intention here is not to replace any of the Dollis gear that I use, but to supercharge it, to add to it. It's the evolution of the mini PC Dollis companion that I've shown in a previous video. And as you can see, it has evolved quite a bit. The heart is still the same. It's the same mini PC that I bought for 100 euros on AliExpress that I've shown in my previous video. And according to my previous testing, it is surely the little engine that could. I'm really happy with the performance of this little guy. For the things that I want to do, it has revealed to be pretty capable. In order to build this system, I've also bought this 10-inch uh, touchscreen that you see right here. I also bought it on AliExpress. It costs something like 60 euros, I believe and it makes it feel more like real gear or uh, closer to it, of course, and not just a computer. And I had the Focusrite Scarlett Solo audio interface lying around because I mostly use the Lifetrack L6 as you see right there. And I decided to also add it to the mix because I wanted to have proper audio quality. And this is a very good audio interface. But of course, the crown jewel is the custom case that I've built for it. I designed this case myself using Fusion 360, but the actual print was done by Planeta 3D, which is a, a, an awesome Portuguese 3D printing company that I've been working with. The construction is uh, very solid, as you can see here, and I've designed it to take into account thermals and usability. I've tested those for this particular unit. Everything seems okay. It runs around 80 degrees Celsius, so I think it, it's quite okay. And I think it has enough vents to keep it cool. Basically, it goes on just like this. The touch screen has its own enclosure, right? Um, and basically, it just fits in the box. It basically pr works as a lid. And it looks like a complete unit like this. Never mind the, the, the colors that I have here. This is just a prototype, basically. And uh, I want to do further work on this. This is far from the, the last version that I'll do. Uh, because I do want to hide, for example, these cables that you see here to connect the, the screen. I already bought the parts and basically I want to make this all flush uh, or as much as possible, uh, given the constraints of, of 3D printing. Um, but I think it's looking quite good, actually. And uh, even though the colors are not, you know, they're mismatched, I actually like the, 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 the two-tone thing that I have going on here. Someone on, on Reddit called it like a, like cheese, like a block of cheese. And yeah, I can see it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the name for this will be Groove Dock. And yeah, I've also made this uh, support stand right here that you, that you that you can see here. It's very, it's very sturdy. And what this allows you to do is basically to have this standing up, right? and you can use it with a, a mouse with a keyboard or just on its own yeah I, I thought about you know how to make it usable for the most use cases possible in my previous video i've shown how the mini pc could be very useful in dollar setups right either when you're jamming or uh, making music or or whatever and yes i know that it's a bit weird and a bit contradictory even that i'm talking about a device that runs windows and a doll in the same context of dollars but think of the doll here as some kind of translation layer it lets me expand on the hardware jams without changing the spirit too much and in the meantime it allows me to save some bucks too which is important. Getting back on topic now, here's some of the use cases that I've shown for that companion. Controlling software synths using hardware gear and incorporating the audio from the software synths back into the hardware loop, applying software effects to multiple hardware inputs and feeding them back into the hardware loop with virtually no latency, and using the mini PC as a USB audio host 
for multiple USB MIDI devices to control external gear. Initially, this system was meant to be headless, meaning that I wouldn't need a screen in order to use it along with my hardware gear. However, as I developed this idea, the need for the screen became apparent. But if it's going to have a screen, why not a touchscreen? Because that meant that no other input methods would be needed, like a keyboard or a mouse. And as a bonus, Maybe I could use the screen itself to control parameters in whatever software that I'm using. But of course, adding a screen also implies adding uh, stands, cables, and everything else, and it would look like a mess. That's when I came to the idea of having a full enclosure for my system. So I got to work. I designed all of the pieces. I tried to make everything seem as uh, seamless as possible to make it look like a complete full system. And some compromises have to be made and I'm okay with that because I want to harness all the capabilities of a computer but still make it work in a dollars environment. And like I said, I, I, it may be a little bit contradictory but I think it can be done. But enough talk, I've talked too much already. Let's jam, shall we? All right, that's a nice beat. So I can introduce to the setup. As you can see here, I have my Digitone, I have my Behringer Grind, a semi-modular synth, and I have Ableton Live. And basically Digitone is handling the drums. So any drums that you hear is handled by the Digitone. The bass, of course, is uh, by the grind. Uh, and um, Ableton here is basically being sequenced. So the little stab, the chord stab. Yeah, this chord stab that you hear is being sequenced by the Digitone itself because the Digitone is connected to uh, Ableton Live and, and uh, it's controlling a wavetable synth. And all of the audio that you see here is being routed to the L6 that you see there on the left and uh, being processed inside Ableton Live, right? So as you can see here, I have three tracks. One is the wavetable. The second one is drums by uh, the Digitone. And then we have the bass from Grind. And this is like th just a simple setup uh, so I can show you what you know, the things that you can do uh, and how usable this setup really is. Um, yeah, we'll just start by adding some stuff. I really like the Digitone for drums. That's what I've been finding out. I don't really know why. And as you can see here, for example, on the digi drums, what I have here, the finger to go along. I can use like an X and Y controller inside of Ableton to control certain uh, effects. And this is really useful. This is really cool. Uh, so it's a fantastic way to use touch. I just hope or wish, maybe I haven't found that yet. Like. If I could have like a special screen, like a specific screen in order to control all, all of the X and Y controls that I have at the same time. I know that, for example, we have software like OSC Pilot and it's compatible with Windows. I might try that in the future because it allows you to create like um, little interfaces, uh, full screen interfaces for Ableton and other media devices, I believe. Um, and that could work, but I, I, I wish that inside of Ableton you could do something of the sort, but it's already pretty cool that you can just... And I have the same thing for uh, the bass grind, so if I raise the cutoff a little bit... bit of a chorus going on. I love this synth by the way. This is this is so cool. If you're looking into to, to get into the, the whole semi-modular synth, this is a great entry point I've been finding out. Okay, what else can we do? Let's cut off the drums. table and
hard to grab. This is what I mean. When I say that table tennis is not really touch friendly, this is because of it. Sometimes it's like hard to grab some um, some of the controls that we have here. But all in all, it's not it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Um, I've been experimenting with Bitwig as well, and I do think that that is more suited. I mean, it has a specific mode to to uh, use touch. So, but I'm still exploring. You know, it's a completely new software for me, so it's like there's a learning curve there. But for this particular usage, I think it might be better suited. And the way that I would use this in the future is that, for example, for this particular device, I would use it only with Bitwig. And then when I want to uh, like uh, expand to a full song, famous last words for any uh, hardware gear or dollars uh, artist. <laughs> Uh, but when I want to expand to a full song, uh, I can just uh, record everything and uh, transition to my main desktop computer, desktop computer, and, and just use Ableton for that because Ableton is still very good for that. And my like go-to doll, basically, I've worked with it for like I don't know, like 13 years, 15 years, something like that. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to to give you like a glimpse of of what you can do uh of course this is like this is like a very little snippet of what you can do i mean i could have like a midi controller right here a usb midi control right here to control the volume levels on the digitone through the computer because uh, it doesn't have a midi I, I don't have a midi host otherwise or and the digitone is not able to to accept that it doesn't have like a usb port um I can control like uh, using the tracks on the Digiton, the MIDI tracks, I could control more than one synth. So it, basically you would be like controlling uh, like hardware synth synthesizers, uh, but inside of a DAW. Uh, what else could I do? Um, I could have more, uh, since I have more inputs available on the live track, I could potentially, you know, link more devices that I have here. That's, uh, that would also be fine. Um, things that I would like to look in, like look into the future is how to turn this into an RD505. I think that's, you know, the bus looper thing. Uh, so because I know that uh, I've never used it, but Ableton has like a looper and this has like f six inputs, six different inputs. Maybe I could devise a way of just control uh, six tracks, six different tracks with loopers, and then, you know, uh, kind of mess about with it with a specific MIDI controller and uh, using uh, MIDI gear, uh, no, not MIDI gear, uh, using hardware gear as well to control it. I don't know, like, there are so many possibilities, and as you can see, the latency is virtually inexistent, and there's no audio defects, everything is being controlled on the fly. I forgot to mention that, for example, here on the main, I actually have uh, uh, like a, a gel, like a compressor gel, like uh, the Cytomic one, the glue. Um, it's not really doing anything right now because it's, the volume is not too high. But you know, you could add like you could add like a, a master buzz effects if you wanted, um, and control them via the Digitone, for example, because it doesn't really matter. Um, <laughs> But back to the to the sound quality, the reason why I'm using this and not the Scarlett uh, interface that I have inside the, the, the actual unit is because one, uh, there are more inputs on the Lifetrack L6 and I've been finding out that um, either because of the audio drivers or the, the, the interface itself, the the, the audio interface, the Scarlett, is not very good in terms of, of uh, handling latency sometimes. Like if you're only outputting audio, that's fine. That's uh, generally it works well enough. Um, but with input audio, I tried it with the um, with a grind, with just the grind before, and it's not really the best thing for that. But uh, as I've mentioned, this is like the one that I had lying around, and I just wanted like a good uh, way to output. Uh, sound from from the device itself and for now that is good I can't really fit the live track L6 into the whole enclosure uh, because there's limits in terms of uh, the size of, of the thing that you can print so 
I can't really uh, include the Live 6 as of now, but maybe I can in the future find some, some way to do it. But yeah, like uh, with the Live 6, with the, with the L6, with the Live Track L6, like there's virtually no latency and everything just works. So I'm really pleased with this. And uh, as you can see, it's like, it's pretty stable. No really audio defects or anything. So yeah, um, I don't want to take too much longer with this, too much of your time. So I just wanted to show you a little bit of what you can do with this. So yeah, this is GrooveDoc V1, not even V1 because it's still, you know, I'm still improving it, but soon it will be V1. And when I achieve that, it's going to be on sale on Etsy in case you want to reproduce the system for your own use case. I believe that this can suit a lot of different use cases, but I'll talk about this in a future video. For now, I want to let you know that I'll still be working on this. I want to improve on this design, of course. I want to hide as many cables as, as, I, as, I, as I can, like the side cables that you saw there. And I also want to uh, try and implement a pad controller, like, you know, uh, an Akai style of, of controller like uh, Think MPD 218. I want to see if I can create a case and where I can implement that sort of pad with a screen all together on the same unit. I also want to know if it's possible to feed this computer with a power bank. It seems like it's a little bit tricky. Um, I have to find the right parts and if, if even a power bank can can feed enough power enough juice to this computer but it's something that i'm that i'm currently looking into because that would kind of complete this while all of this is happening i'm still testing the software i know that for example vcv rack is not really good for touch but cardinal is it's also a good uh, euro rack emulator sort of thing and I've been finding out that Ableton is not really great for touch, but I've tested Bitwig and it is. <laughs> it's really cool. It has like a tablet mode. I'll probably make a video for that uh, to show you how usable it is with this machine. Things are evolving. I have new ideas every day. <laughs> Sometimes it's a little bit hard to track the, how many ideas that I have. I hope that you like the design. I hope that you like this video. Uh, if you have any sort of feedback, any sort of questions, feel free to, to drop them in the comments. And yeah, until my next video, you already know the drill. Keep jamming, keep having fun. All right. See you then. <laughs>